We have some additional announcements this morning. Don't forget items for, for the flea market at the bazaar can be dropped off on Monday evenings at the fellowship hall from 6 to 7.30. And also if you can help with any of the preparations for the bazaar, please see Linda Henney. Other reminder, Wednesday is the blood drive in the fellowship hall. Contact Roxanne Loeb if you need an appointment. Yes, Roxanne? Tuesday. Tuesday. My note says Wednesday. <laughs> Correction, Tuesday. There's also a sandwich sale coming up in a few weeks. Um, Karen, is there in the Narthex? Okay. Sign up sheet in the Narthex, and you can see Karen if you have any questions about that. Um, also, we'd like to add Rhonda Adam to the prayer list, and also um, to the family of Betty Dower, who passed away. Are there any other additions to the prayer list? Yes. yes. Okay, there's posters in the narthex for the bazaar if anybody wants to take posters and hang them up all over the area. All right. And tomorrow is Dottie's 94th birthday. Yay! <laughs> Happy birthday. Okay, please rise for the opening hymn.
together in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to his banquet feast. Will you come? Yes, yes we will respond to God's invitation for us. God has invited the rich and poor, the healthy and sick, the strong and the weak. Will you welcome them into God's banquet feast with you? God has invited the good and the bad, the guilty and the innocent, to partake of God's love. Will you come and receive? Yes, we have been chosen, and we will receive God's word for us. Then let us come before our Lord, confessing our sins, that we may be prepared to receive God's blessings prepared for us. Gracious and loving God, too often I respond to your invitation with, I cannot come, I cannot find time to love, I cannot find it in my heart to forgive, I cannot find it in my faith to give. In your mercy, forgive me my sins, create in me a new heart, accept me into your kingdom, and give me the faith to respond with gratitude, love, and generosity. In Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. Our Lord does forgive all who believe and are repentant and now receive God's invitation to his banquet feast and feast on his goodness this day. Amen. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well body and spirit. We may be grateful hearts, accomplish all that you would do us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, Stacy. <laughs> the first reading is set, taken from the Second Kings, chapter five. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Ar Arameans on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, am I God to give death or life, 
that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you, to have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elijah's house. Elijah sent a messenger to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Albana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage, but his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a present from your servant. Servant, We shall read Psalm 111 responsively. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The second reading is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 2. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, that this is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Jesus Christ with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth, the word of God for the people of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, 
when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't see any children. There was a very large dog, and he walked into a butcher shop. He sat down in front of the case, and he had a purse in his mouth. And the butcher said, what's going on here? So he walks over and he says, hi, fella, how are you doing? Dog doesn't bark, doesn't make any acknowledgement, except drops the purse. And he says, yeah, I guess you want to buy some meat. And the dog says, woof. Butcher says, okay, I'll play this game. Do you want liver? Do you want bacon? Do you want steak? Woof. Hmm. Do you want half a pound? Nothing. Do you want a pound? Woof. Butcher says, okay. So he wraps up a pound of steak, puts it down. The dog noses the purse. Man opened, butcher opens the purse, gets out the money. Dog picks up the package, picks up the purse, walks out the door. The butcher says, I have to see where this dog's going. So he follows the dog, gets to an apartment building, goes up three flights of steps. The dog sits down in front of the door, the door and he starts scratching. A man opens the door, and he starts yelling at this dog. And the butcher says, stop, what is the problem. This is the most intelligent dog I've ever seen in my life. And the man says, intelligent? Are you kidding? This is the third time this week that he's forgotten his key. <laughs> yeah, that man was not grateful. 
on the other side of the coin, there's a young lady named Pam who lives in Chicago and she walks to the bus stop every day. And on her way, there's a middle-aged, heavy-set woman in a tattered old coat um, receiving whatever anyone wants to give her. She's always very pleasant. She says thank you and she says good morning with a smile. And after about a year of this, the woman's gone. Pam thought, gee, I wonder what happened to her. Well, about six months later, there's the woman back on the church steps, same old tattered coat, and Pam reaches into her purse and the woman says, no, I'm not here collecting money. I'm here to say thank you. Because of your and other people's generosity, I was able to buy clothes and get my own place. And she said, I have a job. She reached in a bag and brought out a little package and handed it to Pam. And she said, this is just my way of saying thank you. Every one of the people who had been giving her some change on a regular basis. She bought them what she could afford to buy them. She bought them each a donut. But that was being grateful. She gave back what little she had. Now, being thankful, even when you're in difficult circumstances, that's the kind of faithfulness and that's the kind of thankfulness that truly is faith. Think about the story, we think about it as a miracle of the healing of these lepers, but that's just part of it. You start with 10 men who have the worst disease of the day. The physical ramifications are horrendous. Leprosy attacks the body, leaving sores, missing fingers, missing toes, damaged limbs, in many cases, the pain of leprosy gives way to something even more terrible than that, the loss of sensation in nerve endings, leading to more damage to more body parts. The disease can take as long as 30 years to run its course, and in that, tire, in that time span, entire limbs can fall off. It's assuredly the most horrible disease for us, it's almost impossible to comprehend what it was like 2,000 years ago when medical treatment as we know of it today was totally non-existent. Now, the emotional pain, however, must have been even worse than the physical pain. He or she was removed from the family, from their community. They could have no contact. They couldn't hug their children their grandchildren, their spouses, and when they were found to have leprosy, they couldn't even hug or kiss anybody goodbye because they didn't want to, them to become afflicted with the same disease. Lepers tended to roam together, looking for food, begging for as assistance from a great distance, and they've been forced to announce their removal from their family and friends on a daily basis. So, I mean, can you imagine not being able to be near anybody and just yelling for everything? And yet, on this account, 10 men encounter Jesus and hear him say the most unusual thing. We want to be well, they scream at Jesus. And the great teacher responds, go and show yourself to the priest. Now, the local priest had duties other than leading worship on a Sabbath. He was also something of the health official for the community. If a person was miraculously healed of leprosy, it was up to the priest to inspect the body, to test for a complete removal of the disease, and to announce the person was healed. And if the priest said okay, that person could then go home to his family, he could look for a job, he could hug his grandchildren. Now Jesus says to these lepers, go and show yourselves to the priest. They look down at their bodies, the hands of one man, they were still mangled. Another man looks at his leg, which ends in a filthy rag tied around his knee. 
Another looks at his skin and finds it still repulsive as it was. In other words, all of these men were no better off than they were 10 minutes earlier when they had first spot, spotted the famous teacher. And yet they headed off in search of the priests. And on their way, they were healed. A crutch tripped on a filthy rag as it fell to the ground. The leg was back, whole, healthy, complete. The skin cleared and the white hairs on their arms turned to brown. One looked at the other and another looked at the rest and the screaming started. They started celebrating. The smiles broke into cheering and sweet madness. They raced off into the distance, not believe, now believing that the nightmare was finally over. But in order for the miracle to happen, these men had to start walking in faith before their circumstances had changed one tiny bit. Is there a more potent lesson for us? You cannot wait until the problems are over to start walking in faith. You cannot put conditions on holy God. You cannot say, Lord, as soon as there's enough money, I'll follow your instructions. You cannot pray, Lord, if you'll just solve this issue with my family, I'll start going to church. You cannot put conditions on God. God places a demand for faith on us before anything at all can change. God might say, love me despite the disease. Obey me despite the lack of talent or lack of resources. Follow me despite the depression. Say no to temptation while it's still difficult. Praise me in the darkest nights and in the worst of circumstances. This is the nature of God, a God who loves you so very much. He'll give you the opportunity to be thankful when nothing about your circumstances gives you that motivation. That is the very definition of faith. If you praised God only on the good days, only in the best of circumstances, it would not be faith at all. That would be more like a business arrangement, and this is not about business. Will you be thankful despite the difficult circumstances? If so, you will have experienced faith. While on a short-term mission trip in 1996, Pastor Jack Hinton from New Bern, North Carolina was leading a worship service at a leper colony on the island of Tobango. And Tobango is part of the Philippine Islands chain. There was time for one more song, so he asked if anyone had a request. A woman sitting in the back of the congregation who had kept her back turned to the pulpit the entire time turned around and Pastor Jack said later it was the most hideous face he had ever seen. She had lost her nose, she had lost her ears, and her lips were already affected by leprosy. She raised a fingerless hand and asked, can we sing Count Your Many Blessings? Hilton was overcome with emotion when he left the service. He was followed by one of his team members who said, Jack, I guess you'll never be able to sing that song again. And Jack said, yes, I will, but I'll never sing it in the same way. Be thankful in the work of God's goodness. This kind of thankfulness is worship. One of the lepers came back to Jesus and praised God. He was thankful. He was public about it. He was loud. He wasn't at all shy. Why was he so loud? Well, this guy had been forced to yell as long as he had leprosy. Had it been years? He probably yelled so long he didn't know how to be quiet when he came to Christ. He didn't even speak to him in a normal voice. 
When he came back and fell at the feet of Jesus, he was just louder than the normal person when he was praising God. This week, be sure to take time to acknowledge God for his goodness. Be sure to actually be thankful. Don't miss the opportunity to worship God this week, and don't mind being loud about it. Can you miss it? Sure you can. This might be a horribly busy week. Maybe you have some time off, which means you've got a honeydew list, lots of chores to do at home, some tasks at church, or even some early Christmas shopping. If you're traveling, you've got to get things packed and get the car ready to go. If the family's coming or friends are coming for dinner, you have to go to the grocery store, you have to cook. You've got to get everything done. It's possible to get all the way through a week without ever stopping to be thankful. Don't do that. Commit to it and do it. That is worship. Make sure your thankfulness leads to action. One healed leper came back. One caught himself in the midst of the celebration and returned to Jesus. He reversed his steps. He didn't go to the priest and then go home and tell his family. He put everything on hold and came back to the cause of the celebration. His response and life situation were unique. But in the simplest sense of what he did, his thankfulness led to action. Where are the other nine? Jesus asked. Do you realize what this says? Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priest. Jesus never commanded any of them to come back and express thankfulness to God or return to him, the healer. Nevertheless, it's what Jesus expected. What kind of action is Jesus looking for from you? Has God's Holy Spirit been urging you towards some action step? Has the Lord been tugging at you for some step of faith? Is there a family, a friend, a stranger in need of help this week? Is there something you feel compelled to do? Based on what Jesus was looking for 2,000 years ago, we need to take that step of action. Assume God is pulling you toward that area or that action and get it done. Otherwise, a prayer over that family dinner will last about as long as that sensation of fullness after a meal. I don't know about you, but no matter how full I get, I always manage to eat the next day. Shouldn't our spirit of thankfulness last longer than that? And Jesus says to this very thankful man willing to follow God before his circumstances changed, to worship God before he returned home, Jesus pronounces a complete healing, a wellness that passes all other wellness. This man, Jesus said, understands. Do you understand? Remember that a priest must make a declaration that a leper has been healed. There were great details involved in the process. There were details of what a priest was to look for and how a person with the disease could be readmitted to the community, healed and whole. Did you know that in our record of the Old Testament and the New Testament that every single healing of a leper came by supernatural means? There were great details about what would happen if a leper became naturally well but it never happened as far as we know. Perhaps people suspected that they had leprosy per, were pronounced clean when their skin rash cleared up. Perhaps someone with a mild infection that ran its course was now readmitted. But according to the records of the Bible, no real leper was ever just naturally cured. But there were some healings. The sister of Moses had leprosy for a week and was miraculously cured. A man named Naaman was cured miraculously. 
And that's it for the Old Testament, only two. Now in the New Testament, however, Jesus heals lepers as if they had mild colds and he had the right medicine. It's just leper after leper. Jesus continued the practice of healing lepers, not naturally, but supernaturally. It was another way of God saying to us, this is the Messiah, this is the Christ, this is Emmanuel, God is with you. For only God has healed lepers, only God. And Jesus was healing lepers as if he had that very power. Well, he did. He was the Son of God, God incarnate, and God worthy of worship. Can I give you another reason to love this Jesus? Can I show you another proof that he loves you, no matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done? It's a story in Matthew, from Matthew 8, verses 1 through 4. A leper approaches Jesus, stopping at the required distance. He knelt before Jesus, begging for help. The very sight of him was repulsive. The smell of him was revolting. People gasped and backed away. Some surely commanded him to clear the roadway and not put anyone else at risk. Matthew writes that Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. A moment later, he tells us that Jesus spoke the words, be clean, go show yourself to the priest. Did you see both miracles? The first one is really easy to see, it's that he healed him of his leprosy. But what about the other one? It was the touch of a loving hand. It was the touch of a human hand. Today you've probably been touched by more people in an hour than this man had been touched in years. Today you've been close to friends or family. Maybe a child has sat on your lap. Maybe a hug met you at the door. Maybe it was a firm handshake from a friend. Not this guy. He longed for a loving touch more than he longed for food. More than he needed water, he needed love. And before he was healed, while there was still a tremendous risk, Jesus was willing to give him that touch. No abuse has scarred you so badly that Jesus won't touch you. Jesus is willing to lovingly touch you, hold you, and restore you. No sin has made you unlovable. Jesus is willing to call you his friend and stand beside you. It was his death that paid for your sin. No fear has disqualified you. No problem has put your life on hold. No failure has negated his love. The miracle of giving thanks is the love of Jesus for you. No exceptions, no qualifications, no doubts. He loves you, and for that, Oh God, we are so thankful. Amen. In response to hearing God's
and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforesting. Hear us, O oh God. The response will be your mercy is great. I'm sorry, I neglected that. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is great. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick, especially those we now name in our hearts and those on our prayer list. Give insight to doctors, nurses, home health aides, and all practitioners of medical arts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, with you. May God go before you to show you the way. May God go behind you to encourage you. May God go beside you to befriend you. May God be above you to watch over you. And may God be with you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.